was an issue that is of concern, particularly for those that live in Bulawayo or have relatives that live in Bulawayo, is our state of readiness in terms of our facilities, looking at whichever scenario that she has alluded to. So getting ready for COVID hasn't been an easy road because of the state in which our health system was in or is in uh, at the beginning of this pandemic. And therefore, this readiness requires all of us to participate. The government, Blawai City, the public sector, the private sector, and certainly the citizenry, as uh, she has alluded to. We are glad that there has been uh, progress in this regard. However, from the health side, we are still worried, especially on the citizenry, in terms of uh, our lockdown, that people are still uh, found in large numbers at shopping centers and in the city center. It is still worrisome. And we will appeal to the citizens that please let's do observe lockdown because it is good for us so that we avoid the worst case scenario that has been aptly uh, illustrated this uh, today. Because if we do not observe that and the pandemic indeed hits the worst case scenario, this would not be good for any of us. So the carefree attitude and I would even term it careless in some instances will not help us. So please let's stay at home and make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe and keeping others safe. We are also aware that Blawayo had his first case uh, this week, which unfortunately has already been said was fatal. So therefore, the question is, how ready is Bulawayo to handle COVID? I'll start with the issue of testing, which is how we will know that someone has COVID. We know that currently all testing has been done uh, in Harare at the National Reference Microbiology Laboratory, uh, which is a uh, at uh, the Salim Gabe Hospital, formerly Harare Central Hospital. As of now, the, there is a lab at Mpilo, um, which is in the TB National Reference Laboratory, that is, uh, is ready to start testing. And the machine that is going to be used there uh, will come from National University of Science and Technology which I'm told has already been moved to Mpilo. And the training of the staff there is going to take place uh, this weekend, all things being, being equal, uh, readying us so that we are able to test uh, this end. However, for us to be able to test, we do require the test kits, which are still in short supply. We are hoping that uh, government and partners will help uh, procure more test kits uh, so that we are able to test and therefore can know whether we have COVID among us and in what level and what measure uh, when we are testing. Because when we are not testing, we can never be sure whether it's here and to what levels. The rapid test kits, uh, which I'm sure a lot of us are asking about, uh, when they come, they will be useful, although if you still test positive for rapid test kit, uh, you will need, if you are positive, to be confirmed by the DNA uh, PCR test. It will be useful for screening, particularly even for healthcare workers uh, who work in high-risk uh, environment and therefore have exposure. So in terms of testing, we have moved, and we hope uh, very soon we will be able to start testing uh, in this region. Also, what is uh, happening is that uh, private laboratories are also uh, in the game and they've started uh, making ready so that they are able to 
I'm aware of two private labs in the city that uh, in a week or a couple of weeks should also be ready to start testing. And this will not be done at profit. They assure us that it will be just at cost recovery because they have had to procure these kits themselves at their own uh, cost. So that will really help to scale up the testing so that we know how in which part of the cave that uh, Dr. Lolo has illustrated are we in, in terms of this pandemic. Moving on to readiness of the facilities. The main facilities that we are looking at in terms of, at the moment, in terms of treating uh, COVID are uh, Thorn Grove uh, Infectious Disease Hospital, which has always been uh, designated as such as well as this institution in which those of you are, who are seated here are, which is Eusileni. So in terms of Thorn Groove, uh, Thorn Groove is still undergoing further renovations, but if a case appeared today, Thorn Groove is able to admit a case of COVID, including those that need oxygen. However, Thorn Groove will not be able to ventilate as we speak uh, today although steps in that direction are still uh, being uh, undertaken. So that's the state of Thorn Groove. There's work there, but they are able to admit if there's a case tonight. Egusileni, where we are at, uh, there is lots of work that has taken place. I think you will hear some of the, uh, the work uh, later on. At the moment, uh, as we are sitting here, there are 30 beds that have been made ready here, as well as 12 pediatric court beds uh, in case we have a pediatric case that needs to be isolated. So other beds are still being sourced from all the different parties that I evaluated to at the beginning. However, we still uh, require a linen for those beds, uh, which I'm sure will be ready very soon. However, because this was a non-functional hospital, unlike Thorn Group, which already has some staff, uh, staff is being recruited as we speak so that uh, uh, we have adequate staff to be able to admit our first patient if they do come our way. As I speak, the, an acting provincial medical director has already been appointed for Bulawayo province uh, who will help spearhead that aspect of staff recruitment. And we, we are envisaging that this staff, uh, so that we move fast, will come from already existing health institutions in Bulawayo, uh, from the city health, as we have already said, from um, Bilo Central Hospital, United Bulawayo uh, Central Hospital, uh, and others may have to be uh, taken from other institutions to kickstart us so that we are working while, uh, because we heard that uh, there's been unfreezing of posts, there may then be also new staff that will be recruited. So a letter to that effect has already been written uh, to these institutions to second some staff uh, to this institution so that it becomes uh, operational. The, the staff will also include uh, NAST, uh, National University of Science and Technology employees, because NAST is a medical school uh, which uh, employs uh, mostly specialists who are consultants and, and lecturers. I, I am one of them. So NAST will also be seconding staff uh, to assist, especially at the higher uh, level uh, at the moment. But NAST also does have uh, people that work in the laboratory, we have pharmacists and, and other staff who will also come in to assist uh, in operationalizing Egusileni. The other departments within this institution also need uh, to be made ready, like the laundry, the kitchen, as well as the equipment, which includes ventilators, which are not yet here. And to get those equipments, uh, various people are involved, including the, the, 
the, the trust that's being uh, launched this afternoon, as well as a National University of Science and Technology that is helping the institutions to resuscitate those ventilators that were no longer working at Mpilo and at UBH. Already, I'm told, some ventilators have already been resuscitated at uh, UBH. So some of those hopefully will come this way while we are, we are waiting delivery of ventilators that we hear some of them have been donated so that we can be able to handle a case as soon as possible. So as we speak uh, uh, today, I'm told the oxygen uh, uh, tank will be, will be installed so that, uh, as you heard, the, severe, the moderate to severe cases will require uh, supplementary oxygen, either by uh, nasal prongs or face mask, or indeed if they are worse, by ventilation. So oxygen is very key in this condition. So this is being uh, installed and I'm sure we'll be ready uh, within a day or so. However, Exileni is still awaiting delivery of the personal protective uh, equipment because with the donation that came of personal protective equipment, uh, at that time Exileni was not a designated institution and it did not get allocation, but the PMD is working on that to see how we can mobilize that equipment that has already been distributed through uh, Nut Farm so that Exileni also gets allocated while we are sourcing to buy extra uh, PPEs. And then regarding uh, Mata Day, uh, which is a private institution within Bulawayo, uh, they are also looking at a smaller ward where they will be able to uh, treat these patients. There's work that is already in progress in that regard, but the, the ward is not yet uh, ready. The other work that is being done uh, by the different parties that I have alluded to earlier on is finding institutions where we can isolate those that have been diagnosed and are not able to isolate at home, which will apply uh, particularly to a lot of people that live in crowded or uh, high-density areas to protect the rest of the community. So they are uh, Blawai City Health has already inspected several institutions within the city that are potential uh, places of isolation and the, the various ministries concerned will then be informed so that they activate that. Uh, so that he, uh, here in the hospital that I've mentioned, only those that are very sick come there. Those that need isolation and cannot isolate at home will then be sent to those institutions. The other major issue, like I said, was the personal protective equipment. Thorn Groove, like I said, they, they, they do have some personal protective equipment and hence they, are, they will be ready to, to admit a, a, a patient even as of today. But uh, we need more. The other aspect is that in terms of staffing this institution, uh, there are lots of volunteers, some of you that came particularly earlier, you would have seen lots of people uh, cleaning and uh, sprucing up this place. They are all volunteers who have come. So there are some volunteers who are in the health sector, in the various uh, laboratory scientists, nurses, and, and so forth, who are going to be volunteering for varying periods to take care of patients with, with COVID. So we need to escalate. So we are almost ready, uh, but not all the institutions are ready as we speak. As I conclude, for us to fight uh, COVID, we require uh, teamwork and for us to work together. I will quote from the Bible, Amos 3, 3 says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? I am glad that we already have different parties that are working together and together we are agreeing and moving forward. One of the wisest men who ever lived other than Jesus Christ 
says in Ecclesiastes 4, 12, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and the threefold cord is not quickly broken. So if we work this together as a team, we will certainly win against COVID. So we need you, you need me, we need each other to win this war. Basic information on COVID-19. One, how can one tell if they suspect it? The case definitions are based on the current information available and will be revised as soon as new information accumulates. 2. Suspect case A. A patient with acute respiratory illness, fever and at least one sign or symptom of respiratory disease. For example, cough, shortness of breath and a history of travel to or residents in a country or area or territory reporting local transmission of COVID-19 disease during the 14 days prior to symptom onset. Or B, a patient with any acute respiratory illness and having been in contact with a confirmed or probable COVID-19 case in the last 14 days prior to onset of symptoms. Or C, a patient with severe acute respiratory infection, fever, at least one sign or symptom of respiratory disease. For example, cough, shortness of breath, and requiring hospitalization, and with no other etiology that fully explains the clinical presentation. Confirmed case, a person with laboratory confirmation of COVID-19 infection, irrespective of clinical signs and symptoms. The City of Bulayo Health Service Department, HSD, requires your cooperation and assistance in ensuring that suspected cases are diagnosed early and necessary infection control measures and contact tracing are followed to prevent the spread of the disease.